What's up guys, Jace Two Cents here, and today's video is gonna probably be really more down to earth and apply to a lot more viewers than say, high-end 980 Ti's and Titan X's and Pascal and all that sort of stuff. Now whenever I get to work on a friend's computer, I like to do the as much as I can on video because I think it really parallels a lot of things that you guys are going through with your computer builds and your quest for more performance without emptying out your wallet. Gigabyte's Flex Display technology automatically detects and connects up to four displays for the best gaming experience in multi-display Ultra HD. Click the link in the description to find out more. Now my friend Rob has brought over his computer, which is one that I built back in, I wanna say like 2010, I believe. And even then it was built on an extreme budget of 500 bucks. And he wants to keep his computer running as long as he possibly can. Now recently I upgraded his graphics card from an old GTX 460 to a GTX 950 Extreme. Uh, because he likes to play you know, Marvel and World of Warcraft and stuff like that, and he wants to get as much performance as he can, but again, without killing the bank. And he's running on an old Athlon X4 and eight gigabytes of DDR3, 1333 megahertz RAM. So it's not like a blazing fast machine, but it gets the job done. Now, when I installed that graphics card, we noticed that the boot was incredibly slow. And even though he's on Windows 10, and it is a very lightweight operating system that's supposed to make your system run as fast as possible on things like tablets and phones and whatnot, I was a little surprised by how long it actually took to boot his system. And he asked me, how can I make that better? I don't have money for a new processor and RAM and motherboard and stuff. Well, I told him, you know, this really old notebook hard drive you're using, it's a 5400 RPM, and it was old at the time that he used it. I told him that probably the best bang for buck is going to be upgrading to an SSD. So what we're gonna do today is we are going to clone his drive, that way he doesn't have to reinstall everything. We're gonna clone it over to the new SSD, and then we're gonna do some performance comparisons. So let's go ahead, let's boot up the system, let's time it so we can get some benchmarks here on uh, you know, how much performance he's actually gaining by going from an old mechanical drive to an SSD. All right, so let's go ahead and see if that SSD is worth it here. Let's do our benchmark. Uh, spoiler alert, I promise you it's worth it. So we're gonna time how long it takes to start. There'll be a jump cut. It's gonna take a little while. Anyway, one, two, three. It's going, I swear. See, it's going. Now he does have a password on his system, so once we get to the password screen, I'll stop it, I'll enter the password, and then I'll start it again, because then it's gonna load all the desktop items and auto-load uh, you know, programs on there, which take just as long as anything else. All right, so we are at the login screen. That was 45 seconds. All right, password is in. And we're off to the races again. I'll see you guys in a little bit. I'm getting kind of bored now, so I'm just dancing the phone around on camera. I gotta show there's no shenanigans here. I'm not like cutting it or anything and making it look longer for the sake of dramatic effect. We're at a minute 13, we're at the desktop. I'm glad you have a clothed Mickey Min Nicki Minaj desktop on there right now. He likes Nicki Minaj. Are we still booting there? All right, so we're gonna go ahead and say it was about a minute 15, whatever it was, I don't know. I'll annotate it. I was too distracted suddenly by his desktop, so. Uh, anyway, it was greater than a minute to boot up the entire system. That's a big improvement over what it was though when I turned off all those auto starts. All right, so let's go ahead and clone this thing and I'll show you how I'm gonna do it. Something needs to improve here because if you look at the disc, zoom in on that, it's at 100% right now. It's at 100% just kind of chilling there doing its thing. And as you can see, it's pegged. I mean, look at, the, look at the performance chart. It's pegged all the time because that drive, it's tired. Um, even though he's done, you know, defragment and stuff, it's just the, the drive is not able to keep up with the demands of everything else going on. And I've looked before in the, in the past to see exactly what was running and it's just background processes for the OS that's pegging out this system. He should do a, a fresh install and a wipe, but we're going to clone it anyway, just to see for the sake of performance, how much better it is. And if he decides later he wants to wipe and start over, well, he's a graduate with an IT degree, so he can figure out what he wants to do from there. Anyway, he did go to tech school. I totally ghetto modded and mounted that with two-sided tape. Don't judge me. <laughs> All right, so to do this, I'm gonna use my test bench here, and I'm gonna use a method here with, uh, this is actually a HyperX um, external enclosure here. I can put the new drive in here, and then it basically just uses this USB 3.0 cable, and it 
has power and everything that runs to it. So that's the way I'm going to do it. If you don't have one of these handy, then you literally can just hook both drives up to uh, an existing computer through SATA. It's going to be easier to use another computer than the actual drive itself installed because then Acronis has, you have to build an Acronis like uh, boot drive and then it will go into sort of a DOS environment and then it will clone it over and then you have to switch them physically and boot it up. That takes a lot longer. But in this case here, this isn't a video about how to clone your drive. It's just a video about the speeds comparing this to. But since I know people are going to ask, that's how I'm doing it. One, ex one external enclosure. This guy's going to be plugged into SATA in there. And then we're going to run the software and clone it. Now, Cronus is actually really, really easy. You simply select the source. You select the destination. So you make sure you got the right drive selected. And it will clone the drive, including the UEFI and everything over uh, exactly as it is. So when you put the, old, the new drive in the system, the system will boot regular, it will have no issues whatsoever, same drive number, everything, simply because of the fact that it is, uh, you know, it's, it's cloning everything, the partitions exactly as it's built. And then you just put it in your new system and you're off and running. All right, so the new drive is in, we're gonna do the exact same test here, uh, where we're going to, well, you know, time the boot, otherwise what's the whole point of this? So in the count of three, one, two, three. I told him this is the best bang for the buck. And, uh, I try not to be a liar. Hopefully I'm not a liar. So you can see here it's taken approximately 12 seconds to get out of post. All right, so 30 seconds to get to the Windows uh, login screen. So we're gonna go ahead and do a login here and then we'll continue. All right, one, two, three. Wow. 36 seconds. Yeah, I'd say that was an improvement. Okay, so here's the reality. It doesn't matter how fast your processor is, your memory is, your graphics card or your motherboard. If your computer CPU is waiting on information to be found and served by the hard drive, then it's going to keep your system slow if that hard drive is having a hard time keeping up. Yeah, hard drives have a hard time keeping up these days because you've got a spinning platter and you've got a needle that's got to go and find that information and it can only find bits of information at a time and you can easily bottleneck. I know you guys love how much I love that word, but you can easily bottleneck all of the tasks of the CPU because the hard drive can't keep up. Well, SSDs are amazing because of the fact that it is NAND memory and it's pretty much instantaneous and that you can serve uh, or you can actually search the entire drive pretty much simultaneously rather than dealing with a spinning platter. So I know I've done this video before. I know I've done it with laptops and I just showed you with the desktop. The reality is I will always recommend an SSD to anyone looking to speed up their computer if they're running a hard drive and not an SSD already. Even if you have fairly outdated hardware like this uh, computer here with the old X4 Athlon uh, and you know, slow memory and an old motherboard, because as you can see, Everything he does now, his games load nearly instantaneous. His um, Marvel Universe loads oh, at least four times faster than it used to. And now he can even install World of Warcraft again, which he loved playing because it was nearly impossible because of games that take a lot of intense loading time are no longer gonna be what's holding him back. So I know this video right here was kind of quick. It wasn't a whole lot to it, but I wanted to show you guys a real world practical situation here where a friend legitimately asked me, how can I make my computer faster? Made the recommendation, applied it, and showed you guys the before and after. Anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have any other suggestions on types of improvements you guys wanna see comparison apples to apples, we'll do that. In fact, we're gonna be, we are actually gonna be upgrading this computer here in the near future with um, a newer uh, AMD 970 motherboard. We're gonna be putting in a AMD 6100 uh, FX, I believe it is. Yeah, it's an older CPU, but then again, it's one that's kind of been sitting around for a while. Uh, so he's gonna gain a couple extra cores, and then that alone is also gonna improve you know, the overall experience when it comes to his computer. Anyway guys, I'm done rambling. Tell me what you guys thought. Hit me up on Twitter and Facebook, Instagram, and all that stuff, and I will see you in the next video.